Welcome to the Medicare Open Enrollment Meeting. My name is Paulette Coleman Peoples, and I am the Medicare 100 Plus Coordinator at Healthcare Consumers, and also one of the organizers for the Medicare Task Force. Healthcare Consumers is a grassroots organization, grassroots con consumer health advocacy organization, and we are we were founded in 1977. We provide free individualized health help to hundreds of people every month who are having problems with the healthcare system or who need access to care. And we also do community organizing in order to make improvements in our healthcare system. Our mission is healthcare for all. Today's meeting is brought to you by the Medicare Task Force to provide you with information about the basics of Medicare, your Medicare coverage options, and Medicare annual open enrollment. Before I give you the overview for today's meeting, let me take care of a few housekeeping details. Please turn off your cell phones or put them on vibrate. Secondly, the restrooms are out the door and to the right. Please feel free to use them as you need. Third, we do have refreshments, and you should feel free to get up and enjoy them as, as you would like. Okay. We are holding this meeting today to help provide information to those of you who are Medicare beneficiaries or health care for someone who is a Medicare beneficiary. We want to give you the basics of Medicare, help you understand open enrollment, and let you know about some important resources and programs to help make Medicare costs more affordable. Now I want to tell you about how we're running this meeting so you'll know what to expect. Everyone should have an agenda packet. Your packet includes the agenda and some informational materials. We will run a tight ship. So this morning, we will follow the agenda. Now, I would like to invite Claudia Manhoff to come up for her presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Claudia Lenhoff, and I'm the Executive Director of the Champaign County Healthcare Consumers. And I will be uh, doing a presentation on some basics about Medicare first, and then um, we'll hear about Medicare open enrollment and so on. But before we get started, I wanted to just sort of see who's here and maybe what kind of information you're looking for. So how many of you here um, have Medicare or are here on behalf of somebody who already has Medicare? Okay. Um, how many of you have a Medicare Advantage plan? Okay, Medicare Part D for your prescription drugs? Okay, and um, how many of you are here for yourselves or somebody else who has both Medicare and Medicaid? Okay, all right. Well, um, we will be covering all of those issues. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be talking about the Medicare basics just to make sure that we all understand um, all the different parts of Medicare. So, um, first of all, what is Medicare? Medicare is a federal health insurance program for people who are age 65 and older, people who are under age 65 with certain disabilities uh, and who have typically social security, and people of any age with end-stage renal disease. And you pay into Medicare while you work through your federal payroll taxes. I want to um, talk about the Medicare card. Most of you uh, know the Medicare card as the red, white, and blue card. Um, this one here on the left. Um, there are different coverage parts to Medicare, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But one thing that everybody needs to know is that between April of 2018 and 2019, Medicare will be mailing new cards to everyone. They're going to stop using the social security number as the Medicare number. So the new cards are going to look like the one on the right. So just, if you see that, 
It's not junk mail, unlike all the other mail you're probably getting right about now. Right. Okay, so let's talk about the parts of Medicare. Um, there is Medicare Part A, which is the hospital insurance. So this is, if you are admitted to the hospital, um, this is what covers your, your hospital um, expenses. Part B is medical insurance, and I'll talk about each one a little bit in a little more detail. Part D is the prescription drug plan. Um, now, those of you who have Medicare Advantage, um, I'll talk about that in a moment, that all of that is rolled together. But those are, those are the parts of um, Medicare. So Medicare Part A is your hospital insurance. Oh, and I should say, we're gonna make this presentation available online as well. It, it, there'll be some stuff in here that I'll sort of breeze through, but somebody might wanna look at more closely depending on their circumstances. Okay, but Medicare Part A is your hospital insurance. It's free, meaning there is no monthly premium um, for people who qualify based on disability or people who have worked and paid into Medicare for at least 40 quarters or are or were married to someone who qualifies. If you do not qualify for free Medicare Part A, there are ways to pay in as well, and we've helped people with that in the past. But most people who have it, it's free, you don't pay a monthly premium. Original Medicare Part A has a deductible of $1,316 for 2017 per hospitalization. Um, so that covers uh, in-hospital overnight care. This also covers skilled nursing facility care, hospice care, and some home health care. So um, that's a sort of a big out-of-pocket expense related to Medicare Part A. Medicare Part B is medical insurance and it typically costs about $134 per month and will be deducted from your Social Security benefits each month under most circumstances. So most of you, if you receive Social Security, you see where the Part B um, comes out. Um, the original Medicare Part B has an annual deductible of $183 in 2017. Does everybody know what a deductible is? A deductible is what you sort of, when you have health insurance, the premium is what you pay every month to have that coverage, with, which with Part A, you don't pay a premium. Part B, you pay that premium about $134. A deductible is when you're going to use that insurance, it's that upfront chunk of money that you're being asked to pay for before insurance really kicks in, okay? There is a penalty, as far as Part B, there is a penalty if you do not sign up for Part B when you become eligible and if you do not have some other kind of creditable coverage. So it's really important that when people are becoming eligible for Medicare um, that they go ahead and sign up unless they are delaying the sign up because they have um, like workplace insurance that is creditable coverage. Medicare Part B covers doctor services, outpatient hospital care, emergency room visits, ambulances, blood and lab work, durable medical equipment, diabetes testing supplies, some home health care, and co some covered preventive services. Um, and this is really the bulk of your coverage, and really most of us when we use health care, it's kind of outpatient that way. So this is the bulk of your, of your coverage. Now let's talk about what Medicare does not cover if you're new to Medicare. Um, well, it doesn't cover it for anybody, but if you're new to Medicare, you might not know this. It doesn't cover vision. Um, it will cover cataract surgeries and glasses between surgeries, um, but in most cases, it doesn't cover that. It does not cover dental. So a lot of um, Medicare beneficiaries pay for dental out of pocket or get a separate dental policy. Sadly, it doesn't cover hearing aids, um, which is ridiculous, and it doesn't cover long-term care or custodial care. Um, so in the future, when we're working on some Medicare reforms, we need to make sure that Medicare covers more of this part of the body. Okay, Medicare Part A and B enrollment. So this is about enrolling in Medicare Parts A and B, and it takes place through the Social Security Administration you will be automatically enrolled if you are drawing um, Social Security retirement benefits or after you have been receiving Social Security disability insurance payments for 24 months. Social Security will send you your Medicare card in the mail. 
So whenever you get mail from the Social Security Administration, you need to open that mail, okay? And I'm sure most of you have already been through this process of enrolling. Um, but if you're signing up for Medicare, if let's say you're working and you're Medicare age, but you're not ready to take your Social Security benefits because you're still working, you need to actively sign up for Medicare still through Social Security. You have an initial enrollment period, which is three months before you turn 65, the month of your 65th birthday, and three months after you turn 65. So you sort of have this seven month window to um, sign up for Medicare. So who needs to enroll during their individualized enrollment period? And it's individualized because it's based on your birthday. You should sign up if you do not have insurance. If you have Medicaid or a marketplace plan, but you're ready to qualify for Medicare, you do need to enroll during that time period. You don't just, you know, sort of automatically get put into uh, Medicare. And Adani is going to talk about this transition more in the next presentation. The general enrollment period. If you miss your initial enrollment period and you do not have a special enrollment due to loss of coverage or something, you can enroll during the general enrollment period, which is January 1 to March 31 of each year for coverage that starts July 1 of that year. So if you miss your individualized enrollment period, you'll still have another chance, but we don't want anybody to miss their, their enrollment period. Okay, now we're going to talk about Part D. So um, Medicare approved private insurance companies offer Part D plans with varying, varying premiums. Um, Part D is the part that covers your prescription drugs or helps cover your prescription drugs. Each plan has different formularies. The formularies are that list of medications that they cover. So each plan has different formularies and tiers. Um, there's usually about three tiers in any drug plan. Tier one drugs are usually very, very low cost or no cost. Tier two might be a little more expensive. Tier three, a lot of times newer name brand drugs will be even more expensive. And, and many of the plans organize those tiers differently. In one plan, a certain medication may be tier one, and another one it might be tier two. So because each plan has different formularies and tiers um, and also different pharmacy networks, it's really important to um, pay attention to which plan you're selecting. Now, if you are new to Medicare, um, it's important to know that there is a penalty if you do not sign up for Part D, prescription coverage, when you become eligible and if you do not have some other uh, what's called creditable coverage. Creditable coverage might be, for example, an employer-based plan that the federal government um, and the insurance company agree is as good as Medicare. And so that can count as your standing for Medicare until you're ready to actually go into Medicare. Um, but you should get a letter from your insurance company telling you this is Medicare or credi creditable coverage for Medicare. Um, enrollment into Medicare Part D is through Medicare during your um, individualized enrollment period, when you lose creditable coverage, as well as during the annual open enrollment period. So in other words, when you're first starting Medicare, you can also sign up for a Part D plan, um, or if you've had insurance, but then you lose that coverage and you're ready to go into a Part D plan, you can sign up then. Um, if you already have Part D, um, you can also, you know, renew during your open enrollment period. You might want to change plans at that point, and that's what we'll be talking about later on. Okay, so Medicare Parts A, B, and D, we've talked about it, how you get into those. Now we're going to talk about some of the coverage options um, that round out that coverage because, that, as you've seen, Medicare leaves you with out-of-pocket expenses both in the form of deductibles, um, co-pays, and so on. So we're going to talk about advantage plans and supplements. So it's important that you have some form of hospital, medical, and prescription coverage so that you can access the care that you need and to avoid penalties later on. 
If you don't sign up for Medicare, the different parts when you're eligible, there will be penalties later, making it much more uh, expensive. Um, so you can sign up for those parts, and then you have options uh, for additional coverage and you know to meet your financial and health care needs. So this is sort of a little handy chart. Um, it shows your Medicare coverage options. On the left is if you have your original Medicare, where you have the red, white, and blue card, and you have your Part A and Part B, and you show that card when you go to the, um, to the provider. And Donnie was just showing, you have a handout in your packet. Um, it's the yellow yeah, handout. The yellow. So this information is on your yellow handout. But if you have Medicare Parts A and B, then you can also go ahead and pick a Part D plan for your prescription drugs. And then um, in a moment I'll talk about this. You can decide if you want additional coverage through a supplement. Or the other option that you have if you qualify for Medicare is you can get everything rolled into a Medicare Advantage plan. And that's known as Part C. So that's usually a private HMO or PPO plan. And what that does is it combines all of your Medicare parts, it provides coverage for prescription drugs, and it becomes the payer of your health care when you go to the hospital or, or to the doctor. So some of you may have um, Health Alliance Medicare Advantage. If you have that, when you go to the doctor um, or to the hospital, you just present that card. You don't have to present your you know, Medicare red, white, and blue card. So there's different ways of organizing your coverage. Part C, which is the Medicare Advantage, gives you the option to have private coverage for your Medicare benefits through Medicare Advantage plans, and it's offered by private insurance companies that have a contract with Medicare. When you enroll in an Advantage plan, the insurer takes care of your Part A and Part B benefits and typically Part D as well. You will have a monthly premium for that Medicare Advantage plan. Advantage plans, however, may also offer additional benefits that aren't covered by original Medicare. The Medicare Part A and Part B that doesn't cover vision and all that. Sometimes these Advantage plans will have additional benefits that they do cover, such as hearing, vision, or dental benefits. Um, let me go back to that. One of the other um, things that people frequently like about a Medicare Advantage plan is that uh, the out-of-pocket costs are usually in the form of copays. So you know that when you go see the doctor, you're going to have a set copay. It might be you know $25 or $20 every time you go see the doctor. If you have traditional Medicare, Part B, for example, you're going to get billed for um, co-insurance. Medicare will pay about 80% and then you'll get billed for another portion of it. And we don't always know how much that's going to be. So one of the things that people like about Medicare Advantage plans is it looks a bit more like private insurance through an HMO or something like that. But now I'm going to talk about supplement plans. So supplement plans, um, they're also known as Medigap policies. And these cover what Medicare covers, and they go where Medicare goes. So typically, wherever you can use your Medicare, you can use a supplement. Um, and this is like having two insurance cards. You would have your Medicare red, white, and blue card, and then you would have a supplement insurance card. It might be Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or some other kind of supplement. And typically, you would present both of those when you go to the doctor. And basically what the supplement does is it reduces your out-of-pocket portion related to Medicare charges. So Medicare is like old-fashioned insurance. Um, younger people in here don't know what I'm talking about, but older folks do. Remember when insurance was pretty much, insurance covered 80% and then we were responsible for 20% and that's a percent. Um, so you don't always know what that's going to come out to be. What supplement plans do is they cover most of your out-of-pocket, your 20%. So they sort of round out your coverage um, beyond what Medicare already <coughs> covers, okay? And again, just like the Medicare Advantage plans, you would pay a monthly premium for that insurance. Now, they do not include prescription coverage. 
okay? They just round out your Part A and Part B coverage, your hospital coverage and doctors and all that. So if you have a supplement, you're going to need to get a Medicare Part D plan as well to cover your prescriptions. Now, um, I'm gonna explain about supplement um, policy levels. Uh, so supplement policies, supplement insurance plans, are organized and sold by plan levels. This is helpful in comparing plans because, for example, a plan F, and I don't know why we have letters all over the place, but everything related to Medicare uses letters. These letters are different than <laughs> Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B and Part D. We're talking about within the supplement plans, they have different coverage levels, and they are also organized by letters. So, um, but the way that it's organized is that you can, you can compare, for example, a Plan F policy from one company to the other. They're all the same. Plan F always means the same, regardless of what company is offering it. Um, and we have this is that same yellow uh, handout. It's just on the back. Yeah. So on the back of the yellow handout, you have a chart that shows you in supplement plans what um, plan A through plan N what they each will cover. And so you sort of find the level of coverage that you need. Um, if you want one, for example, that covers everything from core benefits to skilled nursing facility to Part A deductible, Part B deductible, Part B excess charge, and foreign travel, you would pick a Plan F, okay? Um, but when you're picking a supplement, you will want to know which plan letter type of coverage you want. Um, some companies do not sell policies at all levels. But all of them that sell policies are required to offer at least a Plan A policy. So while Plan F policies tend to be the most expensive because they cover everything all the way to like foreign travel, um, they also, um, you know, they provide the most coverage, but they'll be the most expensive. But it's important that you pick a plan that's suitable for your needs. Okay. Now here's something really important to understand about supplement policy enrollment. If you're new to Medicare, or if you're going to be new to Medicare and you think you want a supplemental plan, you need to know that um, the supplement open enrollment period is a one-time six-month six period when a Medicare beneficiary first enrolls in Medicare. Okay. As long as you apply during that time period, you cannot be turned down for coverage. So in other words, that um, supplement plan is guaranteed issue. You cannot be turned down. So sometimes you'll hear advertisements on TV, you can't be turned down. That's only during when you first become eligible for Medicare during that six month period. Okay? Um, also, those policies have to be sold guaranteed renewable. So if you're turning age 65 and you decide that you want, for example, a Blue Cross Blue Shield supplement plan and you sign up for it, and let's say the next, you know, that year something terrible happens, um, you know, you have something terrible happens, cancer or something like that, next year they cannot turn you down for coverage. It's guaranteed renewable. Once you're in, you're in, okay? However, if you're late on a payment, they can cancel you due to a late payment. So, um, and, and for also for other reasons, if there's false state statements made on the initial application. But if you do everything by the book, sign up when you're allowed to sign up, make your payments on time, you're guaranteed coverage through that plan. The goal of these plans is for you to get that policy and stick with it for as long as you are around as long as you have Medicare you're you're going to try to stick with that plan that's how those were designed to work you are not switching these plans every year after your initial enrollment period there aren't open enrollment periods for supplement plans okay so today we're talking about Medicare open enrollment I mean right now I'm giving the basics of Medicare and then Donnie will be talking about Medicare open enrollment but the open enrollment is really just for Advantage plans 
and for your Part D plan. You really are not supposed to be switching the other stuff around. Can you switch plan I mean, you get a plan A, let's say, and then your, your beads change, so you want to get a plan F plan next year? Yes, you can. Our insurance broker back here, <laughs> um, John One time per year. One time per year. So you can, within the policy, within the company, like let's say Blue Cross Blue Shield, once a year you can switch to a different letter plan. Or you can switch to a different carrier. You can switch to a different carrier. Okay, but you have to have enrolled in supplemental at the time you are turning uh, Medicare age. I mean, you don't have to, but that's the best time to do it because you're guaranteed that they'll issue the policy. Yes. Okay, so yes, so I was making it sound overly rigid. There is a little bit more flexibility. Did you mention some carriers around this local area that offer Plan F, or are you, is it ethically, can you do that? Or? I can ethically do that um, because I'm offering information and I'm not trying to sell any particular plan. Um, practically, I think it would be better if John did it because he knows more than I do. Well, thank you, Claudia. <laughs> You're welcome. The Health Alliance, just about all of them. Uh, I don't think Country Companies does it anymore, United. They do, they still do it. I, I, I don't recall seeing one that doesn't offer Plan F, because typically F and C are the two most popular plans. About F high deductible. Is there uh, a high most deductible? of them don't offer F high deductible. There are a few. Blue Cross, I know, does. Blue Cross, yeah. I'll take one more question and then I'll. What if you sign up uh, for one of these plans and then you move? Health Alliance isn't necessarily national, so. Yeah, so if supplements aren't bound by ne networks, right? Like, I mean, your supplement plan is going to be accepted where you take your Medicare, right? Well, okay. he's, he's talking maybe more of a, um, Advantage. yeah, like a Health Alliance, like a Advantage. Medicare Advantage. Oh, Advantage plans? Oh, yeah, 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 that's a special enrollment. If you move and you, that's a special enrollment, so you don't have to wait until the annual open enrollment to switch your Advantage plan. No, I, I was talking about the Medicare stuff. Oh, the supplement? Oh, okay. uh, uh, so let's say you have a Health Alliance Medicare supplement yeah. and you move away from the Health Alliance area, um, I think you should be able to switch because you, you can switch once a year, right? Well, I, for instance, Medicare Advantage plans, if you were on one here and you moved to California, then all Medicare plans, wherever you're moving to, must accept you regardless of your medical conditions. I would assume that's the same for a supplement. I don't know that 100%. Okay, but I, yeah, but then as far as like a, a network, you're talking about a network coverage issue. Um, I mean, you can, you can change, I think, I think if you have a, a life circumstance, you should be able to change, like a, special circumstance yeah, you should be able to change. change yeah yeah and you would call medicare or this the company the, that you're the company and talk to them about that if you're going to be moving we can talk um later okay now if you're receiving medicare due to disability um you will pay the highest premium allowed before age 65. So if you're somebody who got Medicare by virtue of qualifying for disability before you were age 65 and you, um, and you have a supplement, you will be paying a higher premium. However, when you're ready to turn age 65, you have a second open enrollment opportunity to seek out and receive um, the, the premium charged for people age 65. So for example, I take care of a gentleman now who has a disability he already has medicare he's getting ready to turn age 65 so he's getting all the advertisements and everything and if he wanted a supplement um he could actually now qualify under the rules that pertain to people age 65 and older okay so this is just a little chart to com compare the differences between a supplement and advantage plans so supplements Supplement original Medicare, sometimes called traditional Medicare. Advantage plans replace it. Um, 
Supplements have the same benefits across companies. Advantage plans, some of the benefits vary. So some Advantage plans may cover more hearing stuff or vision and things like that than others. Um, with supplements, there are typically no network limitations. Advantage plans do typically have a network. They're more like an HMO or PPO. With supplements, Medicare pays first and then the supplement will come in and pay the remaining costs. Um, and they only cover expenses covered by Medicare. So if you decide that you wanna go get some fancy plastic surgery that's totally elective and Medicare is not gonna cover it, your supplement is not gonna cover it either, okay? <laughs> For the more vain among us. So, okay, and then Advantage plans, um, the plan pays and then you pay the remaining um, co-pays or co-insurance and a lot of times you just pay when you get to the doctor's office or you pay when you get the bill and it's that flat $25 or whatever it is fee. And they can cover additional services including vision, hearing, and dental. Supplements tend to be more expensive, whereas Advantage plans, a lot of people like them because they're a little more affordable in terms of the monthly premiums. With supplements, the, the price may be a little different based on age and tobacco ratings. With Advantage plans, they don't care about your um, age or smoking history. Some supplements may have medical underwriting, like if you, if you join it a little bit later and it's not a guaranteed issue. Um, with Advantage plans, there's no medical underwriting. Um, trial options. This is important for Advantage plans, especially for people new to Medicare. When you first qualify for Medicare due to turning 65 and you join a Medicare Advantage plan, you have a trial period. You can drop that Advantage plan within the first 12 months and you can switch over to a Medicare supplement with guaranteed issue with no pre-existing wait period. So during your first year going into Medicare and going into these additional plans, you have a little bit more latitude to make changes. With supplements, when you first purchase a supplement policy, you have what's called a free look period of 30 days. During that time, you can cancel your policy and you will be refunded your full premium. You get a supplement plan and you decide you just hate it, you can cancel it with, you know, at those 30 days and you can get a refund. You cannot have both a supplement and an Advantage plan. And every now and then we found people who do. <laughs> and then we fix it and save them a lot of money. Somehow, sometimes it happens. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna turn it over to Adani and she will talk to you about actual Medicare open enrollment. Good morning, everyone. Hi there. I'm gonna actually get to the, <laughs> the meat of what we're talking about and what we're about to start. Um, Open Medicare, open annual open enrollment is something that happens every year. Um, it's at the same time every year, October 15th to December 7th, um, and this is to choose plans for the following calendar year. So the plans that y'all might choose this um, after October 15th, they wouldn't start until January 1st of 2018. Um, this is for Advantage and Part D prescription plans, like we talked about. Um, and then if you have extra health or full Medicaid, you can switch throughout the year so you aren't bound to this open enrollment period if you have extra health or Medicaid. And if you have questions about those, we can always talk about that um, at Healthcare Consumers. Um, but you, can, you have a little bit more flexibility if you have those programs. The 2018 Part D prescription plans, we've got a couple of options here in Champaign County. We've got 24 plans available, and they range in price from $17 to $180 a month. Um, and the deductible for most plans is about $400. Um, so when you're looking at these plans, you do want to look beyond the premium. You want to figure out kind of how is it going to cover your medications because uh, Claudia talked about those formularies. Every plan has a different formulary with different tiers and they cover things in different ways at different costs. Um, so when you're looking at these prescription plans, you want to make sure that it's covering your medications, your specific medications that you need. 
Um, and then you can look at the kind of coverage levels, like does it have a deductible? You know, what is it covering on this prescription initially? And then you also kind of want to look at the coverage gap, which is also known as the donut hole. And then after that is catastrophic coverage. Um, do y'all know about the donut hole? Have y'all heard of that? Do you, so the donut hole is a, is a gap in coverage that some beneficiaries encounter during the year once they've reached about $3,700 in total drug costs. So that number changes year to year a little bit. Um, and so it's between what you pay and your plan pays for your prescriptions. So if combined, you and your, you and your plan pay a, a, up to $3,700 in prescription costs, you are now going to get, you're going to hit that donut hole. Um, so this is a t for people who tend to have more medications, more expensive medications, you're going to get to that donut hole sooner. Some people don't get it at all. Some people just don't even get there. They don't have the kind of medication costs that, that get to that level. Um, but it, it's, so you're, you hit that coverage gap and then it's not until you spend $4,950 that you get back out and your prescription plan starts covering more of your medications again. Um, so the cost that you pay during your coverage gap is actually capped at a percentage of what the plan pays for that drug. Um, so let's say you've got a brand name drug and you're in the middle of your donut hole, it's an expensive drug, you do have a cap of about 40% of the price of that brand name drug. Um, but it is going to go towards getting you out of that donut hole. So it is gonna, that cost of that is going to go towards getting you up out of that hole that you're in. That's why they call it a hole, because it's like now your coverage has dropped and so you're trying to spend enough money to get back out of it. Um, and then the donut hole is being phased out though. I know it sounds really scary to hear about it, but it is being phased out and it should end in 2020. Um, in 2018, we've also got Advantage plans. We've got about 11 plans that are offered through three different companies. And again, the premiums range from free to $157 a month. When you're looking at Advantage plans, again, the Advantage plans are the plans that kind of roll everything into one, your medical, your hospital, your prescription, they're usually the HMOs. Um, does it cover your doctors and hospitals? Again, with Advantage plans, you do have to worry about network coverage. Um, how does it cover the services that you use regularly? Does it have co-pays for lab work? Or you know, do you need a lot of x-rays? Does it have co-pays for that? Um, how does it cover your medications? Again, these advantage plans include prescription coverage that's gonna have a certain type of formulary and you're gonna wanna make sure that all your medications are covered. Um, and so again, look, more, uh, look at more than just the premium each month because if you choose a plan that's got a really cheap premium but it doesn't cover the x-rays that you get every month or it doesn't cover a certain type of test um, or if it isn't in network with your provider, then it's not gonna be very helpful because you're still gonna face the brunt of those costs. Um, when you're getting ready to look at an Advantage plan or look at a new prescription plan, um, and let's say you've already got a plan, so if you're, like right now, y'all are getting a ton of mail, you're also getting mail from the plans that you actually have already, um, and that's called the Annual Notice of Changes. And so your company is going to send you a letter and say, this is how your plan is changing, or we're not going to cover this medication for 2018, or you know, we're doing things a little bit different now. Um, so you're going to want to take a look at that and see, you know, evaluate, are you happy with the plan that you have now? Um, are the changes that they're making acceptable to you? Um, or is it going to really cause problems? You also want to review notices from Social Security um, and let figure out uh, and pay attention to what Medicare sends out for different programs because maybe you're eligible for, for extra help now and Social Security is letting you know. Um, so just, you know, pay attention to your mail, especially if it comes from those big places like Social Security or Medicare or your particular company that you're already with for a prescription or advantage plan. Um, and again, maybe they don't send you something, but go ahead and call them. Check with your plan. You always want to reevaluate every year. It's always a good time to just kind of take a look. You don't have to change if you don't want to, um, but it's always good to check um, because those medications change, networks change, doctors get, go in and out of networks. Um, so we always encourage everyone to just kind of take a look again. You don't have to completely change, but it's always good just to kind of step back into your plan and make sure it's still the best fit for you. Um, when you're reviewing and switching plans, you can go online to medicare.gov. Um, you can see the little green button, Find Health and Drug Plans. That's, that's the home page at the very front. Um, you can also call 1-800-MEDICARE. Um, and you can also get in-person assistance with a SHIP counselor, which is the Senior Health Insurance Program. That's what SHIP stands for. Um, what you need for open enrollment, so let's say you're going to go in or let's say you're going to call someone, you're going to call Medicare and switch your Advantage plan or prescription plan. 
So you definitely want to make sure you have your Medicare card on hand. Um, you want to have a list of your doctors with names and phone numbers and a list of your medications. Um, if you need help, you can always set up an appointment for in-person assistance with a SHIP counselor um, or a community health worker. Sometimes Chris Garcia and I also um, kind of are able to help with some of these things. We are not SHIP counselors. <laughs> um, the local SHIP sites are listed up here. And again, like Claudia said, this will be available, this presentation will be available online. So if you have any question um, about any of these sites or if you need these numbers, again, you can always give us a call or find the information online. Um, I do want to let you know again, like you are, we, we make a lot of references to the mail because you're probably getting a lot of mail and a lot of phone calls. So I did want to talk a little bit about the advertising for Medicare plans. Companies that sell Advantage plans and Part D plans do have certain rules when promoting their products. Companies can market their plans through direct mail, radio, television, and print ads. Um, agents can even visit your home under certain, uh, certain circumstances, but only if you've invited them. So if someone's just knocking on the door to you, like trying to sell you something and you don't remember signing up or asking them to come by, they're not supposed to do that. And you can just kind of shut the door on them um, and take <laughs> note of who they're from and figure out and be like, okay, you weren't supposed to be doing this. <laughs> Um, what plans cannot do? They can't call you if you didn't ask them to do so. They can't send you unsolicited emails. They can't ask for financial or personal info. Um, they can't market their plans at educational events or in healthcare settings, except in very common, uh, in public common areas. Um, and they can't compare their plan to another plan by name. Um, they also can't sell you extra stuff like side products, like other products, unless you've ex explicitly requested them to do so. Um, if they can't say that Medicare told them to call you. Medicare does not tell companies to call you. <laughs> so just watch out. Um, be, be weary of, of when they're trying to sell you stuff. Um, when it comes to, now we're going to kind of take a step back from open enrollment and talk a little bit about how you transition into Medicare from not having Medicare. Um, if you have employer coverage, you want to talk to your employer to figure out what you need to do. Because sometimes you need to sign up for Medicare, even if you've got your employer coverage. Your employer can tell you if you need to, if it will be your primary or secondary insurance. Um, and you want to make sure that the coverage that you do have is creditable before you say no to Medicare or you say no to signing up for Part B. Typically, if the employer has less than 20 employees, you do need to sign up for Medicare A and B because it will be primary. Um, after you stop working or your employer group coverage ends, which I was first, you have eight months to sign up for Medicare without a penalty. So that's what we were talking about. You know, you're going to have a new window when you lose that coverage um, because you, you already had coverage, so it was okay that you didn't sign up for Medicare when it, you initially turned 65. Um, so you'd have, you do have a new window when you lose your employer coverage. If you have retiree insurance, it's important to make sure that you've kind of cleared everything with your benefits coordinator to figure out if they offer you a specific Medicare uh, plan. Um, they might have different options than what you would find on Medicare.gov or on the phone with Medicare. Um, and the thing about retiree coverage is that if you do end up choosing something outside of the benefit package, um, you might not be able to get back into, that might not be an option for you later on. So if you, did, if you choose not to get what your employer is offering you and choose something else on Medicare.gov or something, then you might not be able to go back to your employer and sign up through their plan. Um, once you opt out of their benefits, you can rarely get back in. Does anyone have TRICARE coverage? Does anyone? Okay, I'm just going to kind of skip over it through that. Um, and then uh, for people who have Mac marketplace coverage, if your health insurance before you're 65 is on the health insurance marketplace, you do have to terminate your coverage when you start Medicare. Yeah, I just saw a flash, something about the VA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So TRICARE, if you have health insurance through TRICARE or the VA, um, you'll, you'll, you'll want to contact them and, and make sure. You probably need to get Medicare Parts A and B, um, but it's just like, you know, you want to just check in with the VA before you switch over. That's, that's all, that, and that's why I wanted to check and see if anyone had it, just in case. Um, if you want Medicare so that you're covered at non-VA facilities, so it's always good to just kind of sign up, but here's some phone numbers if you, if you need to check in with them. Um, coverage from the marketplace can be terminated online at healthcare.gov or by telephone at the healthcare.gov phone number. Um, you can terminate your plan as early as 60 days before your Medicare starts, 
And it takes about 14 days for the coverage to actually end. So we encourage everyone that if you are switching over to Medicare, um, do that in advance because it does take a little time to terminate your marketplace coverage. And then you would be, you know, you don't want to end up paying two premiums for, for two different plans. Is Medicare, I mean, marketplace, ACA? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep. If you have Medicaid, um, you can have both Medicaid and Medicare, so you don't have to necessarily terminate your Medicaid coverage, but the requirements change a little bit. So under the ACA, under the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid expanded to include more people and uh, kind of go, they have different income levels. Um, but now if you go to Medicare, to have Medicaid, your income has to be at 100% of the federal poverty level, and assets are now considered when reviewing eligibility. So that's how it kind of changes a little bit. So the <laughs> monthly income limit for one person is about $1,005, uh, $1, um, with an asset limit of $2,000. So when we talk about assets, we're talking about bank accounts, savings accounts, uh, checking savings, um, IRAs, kind of those kind of things. Um, Medicaid to Medicare, Medicaid would be a secondary payer and then cover things that Medicare does not. So Medicaid does have some vision coverage and dental um, and hearing aids, right? Medicaid? Yeah. A bit. Yeah, it has a little bit of hearing coverage. Um, if you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you still need to get a Part D plan because even though Medicaid covered your prescriptions <coughs> before, again, it's one of the things that changes when you get into Medicare and Medicaid dual. Um, it no longer covers your prescription. So you do still have to get a Part D plan. If you qualify for Medicaid, you don't really need a supplement or advantage plan, again, because Medicaid is being that secondary payer. It's kind of picking up where the Medicare does not, um, does not pay. Um, and that's it for me. <laughs> Chris wants to come up. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about some of the services that we provide. Uh, to help support and make your Medicare work um, a little better. So first off, uh, some things to keep in mind. Um, you usually get a Medicare summary notice. Um, it, it's just a review of your claims that you've had throughout the year. Um, it's a good idea to kind of just hold on to them just so you know what Medicare is paying for. Um, and then appeals and grievances. Uh, so usually you want to go through the internal process that Medicare has established so within their providers. Um, and so we can help with that, just kind of filling out the forms and submitting them, things like that. Some of the other things that we assist with is uh, we have a prescription program. So with co-pays um, and some long-term, uh, sometimes providers offer um, drugs at, through the manufacturer um, if it's not covered and things like that, so we can help with those applications, do some research, research and find out uh, which ones of those we can get. Um, sometimes there's three months, six months, up to a year supply. Um, we also have a uh, like an emergency prescription assistance if there's a time where you need that copay um, of a maximum of about twenty-five dollars that we can uh, provide assistance with. The dental referral program is uh, to help support that dental access and um, lower some of that cost because you don't have that covered through your regular Medicare. Um, so we partner with a local provider and based on income we can offer um, a discount of about 20 to 40, uh, the maximum is about 60%. So that covers anything that's done within the dentist's office. Um, the only thing it usually doesn't cover but it can be capped at about 40% is uh, the supplies. So like if you needed material sent out to the lab for uh, measuring, things like that. Um, that's not technically covered within the program, uh, but the, the lab services do offer a little bit of a discount as well on that. Uh, the other one is a uh, vision program. So we have a partnership with some local providers to do a free exam and a free pair of glasses. Um, it's usually about a one time, once a year type of deal. Um, and there are limited providers, so we can't necessarily do it every year. Um, uh, but that's an option, um, and then hopefully, you know, depending on what your enrollment options are, um, you can look into maybe an advantage or something that, that might help supplement that as well. The Medicare Savings Program is to help with your Part B premiums. Um, so that's the portion that was about $134 a month that comes out of your 
Social Security benefits. Um, signing up for the Medicare Savings Program covers that cost, so it no longer comes out of that um, benefit and then you get your full amount. Um, that's done through the DHS office, so it's the same one that uh, administers Medicaid. Um, same website, so that'd be aid.illinois.gov. And I was just gonna say, we have a handout on that at, at the back. I don't think it was included in the packet, but that's a really helpful program for lower income folks. Yeah, and, and that's something that we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment as well. Um, and if, if eligible for Medicaid, we can do both in one sitting. Um, so that's always an option. Uh, extra help for Part D is done through Social Security. Um, but we can also help with those applications. We can do it online, or we can do a paper application. Um, if you qualify for extra help, that means that you can get a $0 premium, so that's a free plan, uh, with no deductible and no donut hole. And I think we might also have a handout yep. in, in the back. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of these assistance is all based on in your income? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we, um, we have those numbers, and you can kind of take a look at it, but we can, we can also sit and really break it down because like I said, for a, like Adani said, through assets, like some of that stuff might put you um, over like Medicaid and then you get into the, um, some more complicated parts of <laughs> Medicaid. Um, outside of those uh, programs, we also have just local hospital financial assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the really good ones that we do a lot is the Carl Financial Assistance. Um, you can get 50 to 100% discount, um, again, based on income. Um, and that pretty much um, helps cover that 20% that Medicare wouldn't cover. Um, the only things that aren't covered through the financial assistance at Carl are prescriptions and dental work. So that's why we have you know, other supportive dental programs that are around. And then we have the Medicare 100 plus discount program, which Paulette administers. Uh, she's a coordinator for that. And then when folks have billing questions of, in that program, um, they would come to me and I would contact the, the appropriate provider for, for that discount to be approved. Um, and you can also be pre-qualified for that discount of up to 100% discount. Um, we do those applications and we submit it to the hospital. Um, then we contact you and do renewals every six months. Um, Carl's is once a year, presence is every six months. Um, so it's always good to kind of know when those deadlines are coming up. Um, and we usually send a reminder as well to keep you um, up to date with that information. Uh, and then this is just another list and we have a handout in the back as well. I think it's a gray one that lists all of the things that we assist with. So redetermination for Medicaid, which is done through the DHS, uh, change of address, change of income, uh, SNAP benefits as well, uh, termination of marketplace plans. So if you need to terminate and you don't want to deal with the you know, online healthcare.gov, the waits are kind of long or the phone, we can help with that as well. Um, then we have the prescription assistance. We also have SafeLink. So if you qualify for Medicaid or SNAP, usually also qualify for uh, a free phone um, and then other services that we just kind of um, do our research and see what's available to, to help our consumers. And this is our information for these contacts. And I think we'll take questions. Yeah. I have a question about Advantage plans. Hmm? Yeah. Um, on the Advantage plans, do they bill Medicaid or Medicare? No, they bill, they, they bill like, so if you have a, a Health Alliance Advantage plan, those bills from the hospital are going to Health Alliance, or they're going to that company. Okay, so but, do they cover everything Medicare covers, an Advantage plan? Yes, but, but, but they do get paid by Medicare. That's what I was Yes, oh, you're, you're okay. talking about like, well, who's who's paying for all this? Yeah. Yeah. John? They get a fixed amount of money every month, and then the idea is that they're taking that money and managing your care. So that's why everybody pays the same price regardless of age. So, so anything that Medicare covers, 
is covered in an advantage plan, but there may be other things covered as That's well. correct. Correct. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, we'll go to Chris and then I'll get it. When you talk about Part B coverage and the 183 deductible, is that this 183 deductible, is that the same as out of pocket? The, Once the, you pay that 183, there isn't? No. Um, <laughs> once you pay the 183, then when you go see the doctor or get services, you'll still be billed for 20% co-insurance. Okay, yeah. Yeah. To yeah. get to that point, just to get the co. <laughs> so, so a lot of times, and 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 some um, Part D plans also have deductibles and right. so on. So a lot of times, around the beginning of the year, can be rough for people if. You know, if if they're hit with those deductibles, all of a sudden their, you know, prescriptions will be a little more expensive because they haven't met the deductible, or they'll owe a little bit more for going to the doctor because they haven't met their deductible. Yeah. Okay, and then you had a question. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what the why people would take by a supplement over advantage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like there's. It seems like it's worth. Like there's an advantage to the advantage plans? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because the premiums yeah. are even cheaper and it gets more coverage. Than I, well, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say, I mean, I think, and, and John can fill this out, but, but I, I think it's a, it's a personal preference. And I think for a lot of people who really sort of stay in an area and aren't you know, necessarily traveling as much, and they're connected to that network of providers, it is very convenient. Um, it's much more predictable in terms of the costs mm -hmm. and all that. Um, but John, why? Why? Because uh, you go to anybody who takes Medicare. Like yeah. We used to call it when I was selling Medicare insurance, the I want to go to Mayo whenever I want. Yeah. But yeah. with a Medicare supplement, you can't. Uh -huh. With a Medicare Advantage, for instance, Self Alliance has a contract with Mayo but they have to approve. If you were on the Health Alliance supplement, you just go. What about United Healthcare? The supplement? Mm -hmm. No, it's or, an advantage. Oh, I'm sorry, the advantage. Um, some people have that around yeah. here um, through their employer. What, what are you asking me? I'm asking, could you go to Mayo without having to get approval? <laughs> no. Unless, no. Unless it's a Medicare PPO plan. Right. Yeah. In the state of Illinois. Right. Yeah. I think that's an HMO, but I'm not positive. No, if it's an HMO, HMO, you need approval. It's a PPO, you got to have healthcare. The state of Illinois is a PPO. Okay. So it should be easier to access that. But this um, this sort of <laughs> illustrates the point of why it's important to sort of know your po your policy. Um, you know, we've sort of given you the broad strokes of Medicare, the parts, and the types of coverage. But then um, you definitely need to be familiar with your policy. So the um, advantage, I'm sorry, the advantage includes uh, prescriptions as well. Yes. So if you take a supplement, then you have to also get the Part D. Correct. You, you got it. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Now you can teach this. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. um, the lady in pink, and then. Well, my question is, with the advantage where it states that it has to be in network, how is it determined which physicians, facilities, etc., would be identified as being in network, and which one? I mean, you say you have to check your plan, but you yeah. might sit there and have a list of doctors or. Yeah, so they so in network means that that insurance plan has a contract with those providers um, so that those providers have agreed to be in the network of that plan. And the way that you know that is, you know, um, by looking online or contacting your plan or sometimes you can contact your provider and ask them if they are in the network and you have to tell them the specific uh, plan. Out of network would be um, well. John was, you know, sort of giving the exam example. Um, uh, you know, if if somebody's out of network, I mean, you might still be able to see them, but you would need approval and stuff. But the networks are determined by the contracts. There's so many contracts that stand between us and our healthcare 
Um, we have a contract with the insurance company and we have to pay them money and all that, but then they have contracts with providers. And that's um, one of the things that John was saying, why some people prefer, prefer Medicare supplement um, because you don't have to worry about networks. You just find out if that provider takes Medicare, then they will also accept your supplement. Um, yes, sir. I just, they were talking about Mayo. Uh, they were Mayo, and I just got something the other day that Mayo is no longer taking any Medicare advantage. Oh, wow. Whoa. I have not heard that. I heard that. Wow. Wow. I ain't heard that, but I know there's a couple of Mayo clinics in Florida that do not accept Medicare. Okay. What? So, so, so somebody in that, so what would you, what would be your suggestion for somebody in that situation, let's say they wanted to continue to go to Mayo? Uh, in that situation, I would be looking at a Medicare supplement plus a Part D plan because well, I need to continue. That's yeah. what I've got. I've got that thing in. Make sure I didn't have an advantage. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you know, so, so sometimes what's really important to us is the is the the place where we're going for our health care, and then you want to get your plan to to make it work that way. Um, so, okay. uh, as far as the advantage plan goes, is there um, between Carl and and Christy, is there one that does? Is PPO and one isn't, or are they both, or is there um... So there's some variation. I think there's one PPO, and then there are these plans called uh, point of service, which are like a hybrid where you still need some approvals, but it's a little bit more flexible, like you can kind of go out of network. So it, it, we would just have to sit down and, and kind of like, but there are some. But is Carl and Christy both in network? I think they're in, yeah, in they're all of them around here. For, I'm sorry. For advantage. For advantage, for the local advantage. I mean, for for I mean, WellCare now has both of them in there. Health Alliance has both of them in there. United. Um, okay. United. I'd have to check. Not all in there. Yeah, they're not necessarily yeah. all in there. We we would just have to sit down and look at each. I can't. I have some information on that because I've been going through this for about the last six weeks with my wife. Uh -huh. My wife retired from the university on September 1st. But she worked 36 years in the private sector, only eight years at the university. Therefore, she's Medicare eligible. We both have Medicare. Anyone who is a state university employee in the state of Illinois that is Medicare eligible, they cannot stay on the state of Illinois Health Alliance HMO. The state moves them to a Medicare Advantage plan. It's called TRAIL. Trail. It's trail. Okay. And the open enrollment actually begins next week for the trail program and goes through, I believe, November 15th. Okay. But here's what the real gotcha is because a lot of people who work at the university or any other of the state universities or state employees, period, they have Health Alliance. Health Alliance, even though it's based in Urbana, is not offered in Champaign County and anywhere throughout this area. So if you go to the trail program, the state employees program, you have two options. You have United Healthcare PPO and you have Coventry Advantra HMO, which is owned by Aetna now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And here, here's what's interesting. If you go with the Coventry Advantra and your current primary is a car you have to shift your primary and all your providers to Christie. Yeah. But, the, but Carl, the hospital, accepts Coventry HMO. <coughs> and Carl Physicians Group does not. Right. It's like Blue Cross Blue Shield. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, in essence, if you have a, a major emergency, the hospital costs will be covered under Coventry, but all those significant physician costs will not be. Yeah. So, and so unfortunately, most of those people who do that will end up having to move every move all their providers to Christie. Yeah. Uh, the other option is that we're looking at, since my wife was only worked at the university eight years, she gets a thirty percent discount from the full rate. Oh. Unlike the fully vested ones who get you know zero cost. Right. The actual cost to go and acquire. 
two individual health alliance plans is only slightly marginally higher than the state subsidized plan for Medicare, Medicare Advantage. So those are the options you have as you know, a, a person who is truly Medicare eligible and also a state employee. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a, that's sort of a, a worst of all circumstances in a way. You qualify for all the, you know, for the benefits, but um, we were talking earlier about contracts that are between you and your, and your health care, and there's that other contract which is between the state of Illinois and the plans, and, um, and that, and that they decided not to contract with Health Alliance, and so then a lot of people ended up having to go to United Healthcare. And as you said, as part of that, then they had to switch their providers. And it's yeah, it's Edgar terrible. County, which is just one county south of Champaign County, does have Health Alliance. Mm -hmm. but, but Champaign County and Sangamon and all those counties do not. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Yeah, it's it's really it's really terrible. There's uh, we. Um, we love y'all, but we hate to see y'all show up at this at this meeting because it's so complicated. Your situation with with the state of Illinois, yeah, it got really complicated. And I'm sorry because it is also like, you know, what people value. I mean, as somebody who has health care needs myself, I mean, what we value is continuity of care and being able to keep your doctors. And you know, that's what we're all supposed to value. But then all these horrible sort of contracting issues, you know, get in the way. And if you have an option of sort of doing what's best for you without having to do that, that, that might very well be the there way There is to go. one other item I'd like to mention. For those who retire from the university, of course, if you have Health Alliance and Medicare, Health Alliance is primary, Medicare is secondary, up until the time you retire. And then when you retire, so Medicare becomes primary, health plans become secondary. However, if you go to Christie, you're going to have to jump through a lot of hoops to get those reversed. Yeah. Because since Carl owns Health Alliance, they make that synergistic switch automatically. Mm -hmm. Christie does not. Yeah. As the policyholder, you have to call Medicare mm -hmm. in Washington to get that change. Yeah. Wow. And you, know, you may be on hold for two to three hours. Yeah, we, 800 yeah. no, we've, I've sat on this one. We <laughs> spend a lot of time on the phone. The, 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 ideal, the ideal thing is, is to call about one to two minutes after 8 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. Otherwise, you can get through within five minutes if you call right after 8 a.m. Eastern. That's amazing. But if you wait until 2 p.m., the hour, the hold can be two to five hours. You, sir, are a wealth of information yeah. and it's really helpful. We'll pass that on to other people if we have clients who come up against that. Yeah. Thank you. Sir? Something that people need to be aware of, too, is government is changing the OSF. And the last night or anything on the news that OSF is not going to take for the cross, I don't know if that's going to have anything to do with the yeah. Wait, I, I didn't hear this. Blue Cross and OSF are in a contractual dispute, dispute as they renew their contracts on how much OSF gets paid. Oh, great. What happened, there's three areas where OSF hospitals had an exclusive relationship with, with Blue Cross. It's no longer exclusive, which means they no longer get paid. So Blue Cross dropped three hospitals. OSF said we're dropping our other hospitals. I think it's a negotiating ploy by OSF. They had a press conference yesterday. And I'd be shocked if they didn't agree to a new contract before the first of the year. Okay, they're just going to make those of you, you know, who might be affected by this, like, have months of anxiety. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's what ends up happening. That's quite frankly, those spats and like, you know, when healthcare providers and insurance companies are like frenemies, like, I love you, I hate you, and. They have unhealthy relationships. That's really difficult for for people because everything's up in the air. So we'll keep an eye on that too. Jen, it's really special to be at this community meeting and get this late breaking news. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank thank you very much. My question is inspired by a Donnie's assurance that a no sales representative can say Medicare sent me or phone calls that I hear I hear from Medicare. I am. Um, Getting close to being a 20-year patient of a, a spine and pain clinic at Christie, 
but I think it's just since I've become age 65, I get more and more phone calls yeah. saying, you've been approved for a knee brace. Someone yeah. in your family mm -hmm. is suffering from pain. You yeah. have a medical alert bracelet. Yeah. Does Medicare, how, how, why do we get these phone calls as we turn 65 that, is there a database where oh, yeah. the phone numbers become yeah. available as people who are now old and suffer from and you're targeted. And once you turn 65, you're targeted for everything. It's yeah. yeah. It's not, it's I mean, not a I mean, you know, no. once once you turn 50, you start hearing from AARP um, because they know when you turn 50. So certainly, you know, insurance companies know when somebody's turning 65. Like I said, I take care of somebody who has a disability, and he's about to turn 65 and gets overwhelmed very easily. And it's just constant, and there's mail, and he doesn't have the wherewithal to sort out what is his actual instrument. Anyway, so I so I know how overwhelming it gets, and what I what I would say, you know, is sort of consumers beware if if something is being marketed to you um, that's a medical product or something like that. Really, the best thing for you to do is if you feel that you need that product or that thing, um, talk to your healthcare provider. Um, and and go through you know that way. There's a, there's also a lot of fraud that happens where um, it's a sort of direct to consumer marketing, and then people sign up and they're told that Medicare will pay for all of this, um, and and then later on you know we'll end up reading that some company got busted for Medicare fraud. Um, and the other thing that you started out with that Donnie was saying earlier, really. Um, most of, I, I think all of you in this room are very savvy, but we do have people who get visited um, to their homes, and, um, and if they didn't ask for that, it is not appropriate. We've had people who got visited to their homes, got sold a policy because it was cheap, um, but it was a policy that they couldn't use anywhere around here, and then we had to move mountains to help, you know, to help change you know, get them switched out of that policy and stuff. So if somebody does come knocking on your door unwarranted or, or comes to one of your clients, if you have clients, um, if you can get the name of that person and who they work for, we can help with the filing the complaint. But that's just preying on vulnerable people. So, okay, one more question, or two more questions, and then we'll wrap up. And if you have individualized questions, you can come visit us and pick up materials at the back. Okay, just one question here, too. So, so once you sign up the that period there, um, and you know what the premium is going to be, now can that company then say um, send you a letter after you signed up and enrolled in there? Hey, can they send you a letter say um, your premium for January whatever is going to be and it's more? What happened? They can't change it during the plan year. No, but if you've enrolled to started January 1st and then they said they would send you a letter so the annual notice of changes they're going to say like oh nothing is changing in your plan but the new premium will be right they can do that but you're talking about if you're brand new and you're signing up and you look online and all that first time and they're offering you a plan for a certain amount that's the amount that it's that's the amount because the premium won't if you're if you're 65 and you qualify for Medicare and you're getting a supplement or an advantage um, and you're enrolling in time, it's the premium's not going to, um, it shouldn't change. It's not based right. on your health history. The same if you say, if they get that's the annual, the that's the open, open enrollment. So let's say you've had Medicare already for three years and you've had a Part D plan already for three years, for example, right. and then um, they're, re, you know, um, uh, you're going to, you're going to have your plan again for the coming year. Any changes that are being made will have to be detailed to you in that, including any premium changes, changes in coverage um, of your medications, or, or if they're moving drugs from one tier to another and all that. So, you know, a lot of times people like to just stay on the same plan, right. and that's fine, and especially if somebody's health is pretty stable, you know, that might make sense. And we just, we just ask people to just get in the habit of every year just checking to make sure that, yep, 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 it's still the same. I still want this plan. It's still covering what I need. Um, so make an affirmative choice to stay in that plan. 
um, but do take a look at it because every now and then something changes and sometimes people find out the hard way like when they go to the pharmacy and all of a sudden find out that their prescription that was covered at tier two is now tier three and they can't afford it um, so just you know just take a look um, but yeah okay and then you had a question if you're already on the core party part B Medicare, uh, kind of confused, when can you actually add a part B if you want to for payments? During open enrollment. So October yep, October 15th to December 7th every year, you can get onto a part D plan um, or change to an advantage or choose an advantage plan, um, and that happens once a year. So usually you aren't able to unless there's like a special circumstance, like you've moved to a different area, something like that, that would then allow you to do that at a different time of the year, but usually it's once a year between October 15th and December 7th. Yeah. And if, and if you've been without a Part D plan for a while, like if you're coming in late to Part D coverage, you may have a penalty. Um, but when, when you're ready to sign up, if you need help with that, you can talk to us and we can help you look through the plans. But the other thing is, um, uh, and I don't know your circumstance, but um, you were interested in that slide with the VA. But a lot, so a lot of veterans who have um, benefits through the VA get their prescriptions through the VA, and that actually counts as creditable coverage for a Part D. So let's say you're getting prescriptions through the VA, but they don't have the medicine that works best for you, and you decide you want to go ahead and get a Part D plan. Um, you should be able to do that without a penalty since you've had the VA um, prescription coverage. Okay, all right. Well, I know this, is, this can all be very confusing. Hopefully you were able to locate yourself where you are in all the sea of information. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to come up and um, talk to us and we can also help schedule appointments and give you more individualized help. And um, if you have email, I hope you signed in because um, we can send you updates over email and we will post this, we will get this posted up on our website and we'll send out an email about it as well. And then hopefully you can find the information that you need or share it with other people or use it as a reference. Um, thank y'all very much. We do, we have one, I hope it's a quick question. Oh, what happens if you're not going to close?